The Bitterroot Water Partnership knew that Tolan Creek was a priority when we saw the East Fork running brown. When a stream is muddy, it's not just bad for fish, it means that the stream is in trouble. Tolan Creek was a major source of cold, clean water for the Bitterroot River. Then, extreme fires left 5,000 surrounding acres completely degraded. When rain on snow episodes caused rapid melting, huge water pulses bulldozed through the valley. These events locked the habitat into an unhealthy state, so that Tolan Creek has been delivering warming, muddy waters to downstream areas. Headwaters restoration is incredibly important. Um, by working all the way at the top of the stream, you have a chance to influence everything that happens downstream. The benefit of this project downstream is that when you store water high up in landscapes, especially in Western Montana where our aquatic animals need really cold, really clean water, the groundwater that's stored high up in our mountains is cooled by the ground. And when it stays there, it means that we have more continuous water available, a cold source of water that will flow downstream even in these very warm summers that we're experiencing more and more often. So that's the biggest benefit is water storage and that water being more readily available throughout the year because it's not just running down the mountain like it is right now. <laughs> Projects of this scale do not happen without collaboration. So when we were able to work with the Forest Service and bring in the Two Wolf Foundation and hire local contractors, something really amazing happened. The Bitterroot Water Partnership worked with local contractors to remove 24 failing culverts, restoring natural stream flows across 100 acres. We partnered with the Two Wolf Foundation, who brought a team of hard-working veterans to install 40 beaver dam analogs across 20 acres. The Bitterroot National Forest restored thousands of trees across acres of barren mountainside and wetland area. These treatments, and others, will restore 150 acres of critical headwaters habitat at Tolan Creek, creating benefits that travel miles downstream. The big takeaways are, Put posts, wood not treated, natural wood posts, into the stream bank, and then you weave in natural materials, natural native materials, being conifers, willows, uh, almost like weaving a basket. Or, you know, I try to, if anybody's seen a loom, and you're trying to make that as tight as possible. But the great part about it is, is that nature's, nature comes in behind it and packs that with sediment and other debris, and it's just like a big net. The main focus of these putting in these beaver dam analogs, the BDAs, is to restore a really vibrant, effective, functional wetland habitat. The idea is that they not only slow the water down, but they also capture rocks and sticks and other material that will build up and flatten out the valley bottom. So it'll be less steep than it currently is. And when we build that up, the water can then flow over its banks and out into the valley bottom. And rather than the stream going straight down the valley, like it is right now, it will meander and wind through the valley. Everywhere where the new stream will go, water will sink into the valley so that grasses and willows and other things can grow, which benefits everything from the fish to the the beavers that we'd like to see return, the elk and the moose, and it benefits everyone. For me, looking at Tolan, and as, as a veteran, uh, knowing how much the um, working in conservation has really filled a hole for me, because so many veterans, they, they exit the service and they don't necessarily have a plan or they think they do and it doesn't, it doesn't work out and they're always looking for purpose and public lands, public land managers face just incredible pressure to maintain major areas of public land. And if I can bring a team out here to show up and get the work done and start chipping away at some of that work that needs to happen so that these places can stay open, uh, that's why. 
That's why. There is no way that we could have accomplished the amount of work that needed to happen without the help of Bitterroot Water Partnership, without the phenomenal efforts of Two Wolf. So when we can see teams of people come together and work together and not only just that, but get to know them and get to connect with them. For me, it's kind of spiritual. Um, I might get choked up a little bit, but it is. You know, it's just that that's where it is for me. And um, Being a, a resident of the Bitterroot Valley um, and getting to do some work in my backyard has been extremely fulfilling, satisfying, and I, I'm excited for the impact that now this colder water flowing down into the East Fork and headed to the Bitterroot and know that we have just a small part in it. It's really cool. Projects like this don't happen without a significant investment. Um, and that's from, that's from grants, foundations, volunteers, um, and people of the Bitterroot, people who showed up and invested in the Bitterroot Water Partnership and said, I trust you to get the good work done. The Water Partnership will continue identifying high priority sites, uh, bringing together the right partners to get the work done, and securing the funds necessary to do work at this scale. And I know there was contractors, you guys, us, Forest Service, I think I'm forgetting one more, but yeah, I'd love to hug them all because it's like, hell yeah, like you're not alone and thanks for the opportunity. Just thank you for you and just a huge thank you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, hug? Yeah. We yeah, could hug. Yeah. Have... Alright, bring it in kids. <laughs>